Back in an Easter surprise surprise in half an hour, with more people upon whom they spring some unexpected moments. Now, though, Gemma Craven and Susie Quattro are skyrunners. Hello, I'm Andrew O'Connor. Welcome to Skyrunners. I'm here in the Neptune Hall at the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich. It's great, you've got to come here. It's a place so full of the excitement and drama of the sea that if you close your eyes, you'd sway you're in Howard's way. Back to the show. The starting point of our race is the Solent, Leap Country Park. It's a race between two teams. Each team both have 45 minutes. First of all, we have the red team. On the ground is controller Austin Mitchell, MP. Labour, and in the air is his skyrunner in the red helicopter, Gemma Craven. The other team is the blue team, that's Julian Critchley MP, Conservative. He's on the ground as their controller, and in the air is his skyrunner, Susie Quattro. There you have it. Two helicopters, four people, and they both have two tasks. They have to find the five puzzle parts in the 45 minutes allowed, and then they have to solve the puzzle, find out what it all means. Now, we built two of these, a red one and a blue one. They both had one of these, it's a headset, and the red and blue teams use this to talk to each other, but they cannot hear what the other team are saying, very important that. They also both have one of these. This is an ordnance survey map, and it's sheet number 196 in the Land Ranger series, but you can use any map you may have of the Southampton area. Now this is the computer, and upon this will appear all the pages of information that they need to solve the puzzle parts. Uh, excuse me, yeah, no peeping. You can look at that later. If the controllers find the first page too hard, they can call up other and easier pages, but they will incur time penalties. Leap Country Park, the nearest you can get to the sea without falling in. Now, the Skyrunners arrive to meet their controllers, and here we are from left to right. That's uh, Julian, Susie, the handsome bloke in the middle, Gemma and Austin. I've just given them the first of their five puzzle parts. A packet of Bisto. So that leaves four puzzle parts to find. So away go the girls. Well, look what I got. Oh, right. Got my packet of Bisto. They've told their pilots to stack over grid reference number SU486054. For those without maps, that's over the River Hamble. Just look at all those yachts. Right, here comes the start. Okay, now here we are. Here's the first clue. In August 1990, the mother was 90. In July 1990, the daughter was 150. If this is an example of lateral thinking, Conservative MPs are not allowed to think laterally. <laughs> In August 1990, the mother was 90. In July 1990, the daughter was 150. Where is unemployed Derek? Now, can you make anything out of that, over? Because I can't. Nope. <laughs> Julian, how's it going over here? Uh, at the moment, we've got as far as the Queen Mum. I'll just put this down for you, yep. so they can hear. We've got as far as the Queen Mum, but we're a bit foxed on the lateral thinking. That, that's the Queen Mum, isn't it? Yes. So... Uh, uh, and the daughter was 150. 
Now, the daughter was 150. That could be uh, the Queen Mum's daughter is Queen Elizabeth. Right. Uh, so perhaps the the name has been used for a ship uh, for 150 50 years. That would be my guess. Right. Where is unemployed? Derek. Let's try it again, Susie, if I read it out. In August 1990, the mother was 90. Well, clearly that was the Queen Mum and all those parades and all the rest of it. In July 1990, 1990, mind you, the daughter was 150. Now, that, what daughter would that be? Where is unemployed Derek? Over. I don't know. I'm fast. I'm trying to think. Um, I haven't got a clue. Over. It must be the, the QE2, uh, I think. Can you set off for the QE2? Is that what you think we should do, Gemma? Over. I think we should go for the QE2, yeah. I think so. I mean, there's a huge ship up there, but I don't know what the QE2 looks like, but we'll find out soon enough. So we we'll go straight ahead for the QE2. Now, this unemployed at Berwick, did you say? Over. I'm going to have so I can listen to you two. I'm going to have a little, little, little listen here. Uh, wh where is unemployed Derek? In August 1990, the mother was 90. Just think about that. So, what, have you? I am thinking about it. I'm standing for attention. I'm very loyal. Have you any thoughts on it? I think that she's done very well to last so, until 90. So, it's, it's who? It's the who is that? That's that's Queen Mum. Right. Okay. So the daughter was 150. I'm going to leave you without the 150. You know, I really love knowing the answers, and these politicians have got no idea. I love this show. Yeah, unemployed Derek, though, uh, it must be something to do with the oil refinery, surely. Uh, no, no, no. Phew, I can't help Anyway, there. if you've got, you got to town where uh, I think the QE2 uh, is in, you'll, you'll go past... Uh, you, don't go over Southampton Water, by the way, Gemma. It's probably been privatised, and you'll be, you'll, be, uh, uh, you'll be trespassing. So if you go up... Uh, towards Southampton, go past the uh, Royal Victoria Hospital, which was where Florence Nightingale uh, finished up, I think. I hope not in the cemetery. There it used to be a lunatic asylum, so, so don't drop in there. That's an instruction from me. Over. Do you reckon we should go to the QE2? Over. I think we should go directly to the QE2. I think those first two lines relate to the QE2. But who or what Derek is, I really don't know. We'll have to really think about that one. What do you think, Susie? Do I have to press a ridiculous button? An idiot button? Over. I, I don't know. I'm still thinking it could be uh, Queen Victoria. That she was the daughter of somebody else, wasn't she? She was the daughter of Queen Mary, wasn't she? I mean, I'm getting all mixed up, but I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to follow suit, does it? You see what I mean? Over. What? 90? I forget. So she clearly wouldn't be 150. Um, the daughter of the Queen Mum is, of course, the Queen. Where is unemployed Derek? I think I'll take a penalty point and, uh, and get the, no, no, no. the next line. What do you reckon? Shall we risk that? That takes ten seconds off our time. I'll, I'll press P and take a penalty if you agree. No, Over. no, 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 no. Let's, wait. Let's hang on a minute. Let's hang on a minute. Hang on. Over. All right, how are we doing over here, Austin? OK, well, uh, Gemma, we're just... Uh, Conversing about how we're doing, we're, we're doing quite well. We're going, we're heading for the QE2. Right. Uh, we puzzled by where is unemployed Derry. Do you want to take a penalty and go for your second page? Yes, I think so. All right, Julian is taking the penalty. He's going to go for his second page over here. Okay. This is the first. Clue. So it says, "Hello, hello go on. Does hello sailor give the reigning monarch a hoist?" Well, hello sailor. Curious is, is curiously what rude people say to Prince Philip, isn't it? <laughs> It, it can't be Derek Hatton, can it? Because he's in Liverpool, uh, <laughs> and the QE2 doesn't go there anymore. Uh, so you head for the QE2, Gemma, and then uh, yes. come down there, and we'll talk then about unemployed Derek. OK, over. OK, right, over. Right, we've got the QE2 in sight, OK? So I'm going to leave it up to Mark to find somewhere for us to land. Now, what we've got to think of is how does this Visto relate to unemployed Derek? It must, I mean, there must be something, some clue somewhere. Unemployed Derek. Maybe it's the chef who's unemployed on the QE2 now that they've docked. There's what know. looks to be Derek's or something in the in the river marked on the map there. I'm just having a look in the water. Oh, there's a very lovely boat out there. I mean, apart from the QE2. Derek, hang on, hang on. I'm having a looking. There's a... Hang on, there's the QE2. I, can, I just cannot think what could be Derek. Is it Derek?
Eric, a boy, over. <laughs> it's D E double R I C K, Derek. Uh, uh, no, it isn't a boy in the sense of B O U Y, B U O Y, or whatever. Uh, so I don't think that counts. It has to be an oil Derek or something. Ah, um, could it be, Julian, could it be the uh, College of Nautical Studies? Could it be there? The College it's just of Nautical on the, Studies. Um, coming into the River Hamble. Because that's um, like sailors, isn't it? I don't Over. Know. I don't think so. We're going to go sailor. Mon reigning monarch a hoist. Reigning monarch a hoist. Da 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 Hang on, there's a thing here, if I may say. Is she at the QE2 yet? Yes. Are you at the QE2 yet, Gemma? Over. Yes, we're flying over the QE2 right now. Oh, God, I feel thick. You're not thick, Gemma. You've got it. In July 1990, the Cunard line was 150 years old. Its flagship is the QE2. OK, well, you possibly think you'll have to come down. I think I'm going to take, uh, lose 10 seconds of time, Gemma, and uh, ask for the next clue. So I, I, will, I will do that. I'll take the next clue no, while you come no, down. No, hang on, Austin, okay, Austin. A Derek, I know, is something to do with an... Oh, hang on, hang on, that's a Derek. That's crane thing, that's called a Derek. I remember now, I'm sure. And it's unemployed because it's the only one that's not attached. Oh, oh it's got anything to do with the QE2. I'm sure that's a Derek. Hang on, hang on. Where is, is she? It a crane, epic Where's thing? Gemma? Over. It could be a crane. She's, she's over the QE2. Has she landed uh, yet? Yeah. I've landed, I've landed. I'm gonna get out and ask somebody. Okay, you're getting out and ask to ask somebody. Right, well, I'm gonna take a penalty point. No, no! Excuse me! What's a Derek? What's a Derek? What's a Derek? It's a crane. Is that a Derek? No, I don't think that's a Derek. I found a Derek! I found... Oh, I've got it, I've got it! I got it, I got it! How the hell am I gonna get to it? Do I have to get up there? Can we lower the Derrick? Can you lower the Derrick? Bring it down! Gemma, what have, you, what have you got? You've got something attached to a crane, have you? Gemma, if you have a T-shirt that's wet and it's got an eye on it, freeze! You are frozen! <laughs> and she was. But Susie is still running, and so is her clock. See you after the break. Now, welcome back. We left Gemma frozen at... 34.12. ...with Susie still searching. Well, Susie was frozen at... 32.09. ...which puts her... ...two minutes, three seconds... ...behind Gemma. A quick recap on the puzzle so far. Both teams have a packet of Bisto and this rather highly decorated T-shirt. So that's two down and three to go. Now, both Skyrunners are parked on the quayside by the QE2. Here comes the free page for Zone 2. OK, Gemma, are you ready? I've, I've got the clue here. Nettie Seagull's chum wrote the book. Troy Tempest loved to be beside her. The vestibule of flight is the location. Now, what do you make of that? Over. Well, Nettie Seagull was in The Goons, but I don't know who his chum was. Who wrote the book? I don't know. All I can think of is Nettie Seagull's chum. Might be Spike Milligan. And if he wrote the book, the book is Hitler, my part in his uh, downfall. Boy Tempest, uh, was that Thunder? No, that wasn't Thunder. Was that Thunderbirds uh, or something? Spike Milligan's written various books like uh, Hitler or Rommel, uh, my part in his downfall or whatever. Troy Tempest. Troy. I'm sure he was one of those characters from something like Thunderbirds or, uh, you know, one of those things, the puppet things. Over. Thunderbirds, that's right. Ah, oh, there's nods of recognition. They said, yes, it must be Thunderbirds. Do you think you want to go for your second page or we're going to stick with it? So up, up towards uh, Southampton, up the river, yes? Over. Are you asking or telling me over? Is that correct? Over.
Troy Tempest is Thunderbird. Uh, who did he love to be beside? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? OK. Have you had any views on that? Who Troy Tempest loved to be beside, Gemma? Over. Was it Marina? No, Say again, over. Marina. I, th I don't know. I think maybe it was Marina. And she Marina, was... Marina! Marina! Uh, Marina, you might be right. Hang on. Yeah, there was well, a glimmer of recognition well, right then. Oh, perhaps there is a flying boat up there. And uh, in which case, the name of the flying, flying boat might be of some interest. Over. OK, so I'm going up the river towards Southampton looking for a flying boat, correct? Go. Hello, I've been able to overhear my distinguished colleague, the actor. Overheard, eh, Julian? Well, there's a politician's sense of fair play for you. Troy Tempest has something to do with the Thunderbird. If I were you, I think I'd consider going for the next page and taking the time penalty. What do you think? Yes, I think so. We're not going to get it, are we? Susie, I think we ought to, ought to press the button, don't you? It says, pigs might do this, but boats? Question mark. It's flying boats. Of course we're right about it. Southampton Hall of Aviation might reveal all. So there must be some sort of aviation museum, and there must be a blooming great flying boat somewhere up the Southampton Water. Julian, put it there. I'm proud of you. I'm proud to have a Tory in this cupola. Oh, OK, then. Uh, what do you think about... Why are you going to... Would it be anything to do with the boat show? The boat show? Well, you are in Southampton, aren't you? The boat show is on in Southampton. No, look, I'll, I'll, I'll take the next page. I'll, on, I'll, I'll, I'll take... I'll take P. Take, take next page. I'll take next page, lass. The People's Party will take the next page. Go over. Then. Austin has taken the next page. He's coming out with his hands up. Over. Well, we'll just stick with what we got. And we'll look for a museum with a flying boat or something like that anyway. OK, Gemma, here's the next clue. Figs. Figs. Pigs. Pig, pigs might do figs. this. God, you see, no, pigs might do this, this wonderful but thing. boats fly. 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 Pigs yeah. might do, fly. Pigs okay. Might do pigs this. might do this, but, but boats, boats it question says. mark. So that means fly. Pigs might fly, but boats can't. Flying boats? Yes, right. Flying boats. Hovercraft. Uh, Southampton Hall of Aviation might reveal all. Right. Southampton Hall of Aviation. Uh, Gemma. Yes, that's a very useful one. Southampton Hall of Aviation. Uh, do you make anything out of that? Well, listen, that, look at me. That's something to do with flying boats. Listen, listen, look, if it says Southampton Hall of Aviation might reveal all, if I were you, I'd go there. Oh, this isn't Southampton Hall of Aviation. <laughs> These are my simplistic solutions. Oh, where is it? Do, do, uh, do you know that the Southampton Hall of Aviation, Gemma? Over. Well, I think we should take off anyway. See if you can find a Southampton Hall of Aviation, go Gemma. that way. Over. Well, I tell you what, we're going back up towards, sort of, down the River Itchin way. You're going down towards Spithead, where they keep the bust of Roy Hattersley. Uh, <laughs> uh, Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to tell you, Julian, who Toy Trempers, Toy Troy Tempest liked to be near, right? His girlfriend was called Marina. All right, Julian. Don't tell us that I told you that. No. Uh, Marina. And with that, I'm going to walk away slowly and hope for the best. I've had a brainstorm over. Troy Tempest's girlfriend was called Marina. The Southampton Marina is presumably where the boat show is. So you want to go there and land. But I don't know what on earth you're going to find when you get there. I think we have to go for the Hall of Aviation. I think that might be where it is. I think, and I think I think I know, it's the Marina. Well, it says Southampton Hall of Aviation might reveal all. So if I were you and I wanted to reveal all, I might go to Southampton Hall of Aviation. Just like a little. Uh, don't ask me why, but that's just what I'd do. Which might be in the marina, possibly. There's a place down here that's got a huge sort of catamaran type thing in it. Hang on, I'm getting all carried away here. And it's got, um, there's a lifeboat, a docked, docked lifeboat, and it's a marina. It's a marina. What's your location then, uh, then, Gemma? I mean, uh, I might be able to find that on the map. Oh, we could do it like the Polis Review. I mean, Hang find on. out what the toys are doing and then follow it. Uh, oh, no, you're not allowed to play Polis Review. We have to do that. We that have to do not that. Allowed. Quick, Mark, land. Boom, boom, please. Give us a location on the we'll map, Gemma. Over. She's out and she's running. I don't know. Over here, I think, somewhere. Aha! Hang on. I think I see some. You? Where? Here. Go! 
the best of you a flight. Right, well, listen, best of you a flight, Hall of Aviation. It's the same the thing. Hall, the Hall of Aviation. Go to the Hall of Aviation when you get down there. Over. This is extraordinary, isn't it? It's also the Hall of Aviation! Can you, can you hear me, Jeff? Say, go, go for the Hall of Aviation. <laughs> Just keep me, keep me talking. Just keep talking. I'm getting there. Bye. Great, we're just trying to get to the to what we're looking for here. We're nearly there. Where are the flying boats? Shoe polish. Susie, you've got the shoe polish. You are frozen. So Susie is frozen at 23.31. And Gemma's still running. It's an aeroplane. Like Gemma's frozen at 24.20. So they now have three of the puzzle parts. The Bisto, the T-shirt, and the tan polish. Question is, what do they all mean? Don't we? Back to the seaside. It's turning very cold, and the designer couplers are not centrally heated. Julian is not happy. There you are, look. It deserves looking at. There we are, look. You're used to poverty, That's right, whereas you're not. That's it. The broth of politics. After wrapping Julian up, if you'll pardon the expression, we stack the Skyrunners at grid reference 392026, which is Bewley Manor, home of Lord Montague's Motor Museum. OK, Jenna, here comes the, the next clue. Uh, it's 196, that's the sheet, presumably, the map sheet. 196, four o o o s And then o o o two o o o and then a degree sound o o and o o underneath it. And then the, th the fourth clue is six and seven eighths. So that must mean it's the intersection of line four o o o with line o o o, uh, which is just between Little Purnell and Buckler's Hard. 40 00 is, yes, next to Buckler's Hard. And now 000 to 000. I don't know what 000 degrees mean, uh, or 00 feet, or 00 inches, although it could mean it's right bang on that intersection of those two lines. Uh, and then the, th the fourth clue is 6 and 7 eighths. 6 and 7 eighths is a hat size, isn't it? And then it says 6. Gap, seven stroke eight. But I think, with any luck, you should be hovering over Buckler's heart, and I should stay there if I view. Oh well. Well, six and seven eighths usually is a hat. But uh, there's, I'm, I'm looking to see if there's somewhere we've reached the, sort of an area that we're thinking of. I'm trying to see if there's somewhere we can land. Does Susie know that part of Sam Peep's Navy was built here? Or does she care? I'll take a penalty point and take the next clue because this is too difficult for me. Six and seven eighths can only be a hat. Uh, so I now want P. Well, I'm going to take the next clue. Hang on, hang on. We're, we're finding somewhere to land. Hang on. Do you want, do you want to take um, a penalty and get the next page? Yes. Oh, so there you are. So there we are. Now, hello. I've come and taken the penalty. Fine. And we're on to the next one. This makes life a lot easier. It says, this answer is hard. Now, that must be a reference to Buckler's hard, which is right down beneath you. And then it says, find a West Sussex cathedral town. Well, the only West Sussex cathedral town is Chichester. Now, whether or not there is an abbey or a place in, in Bewley called Chichester Abbey, or Chichester what, I've no idea. And then it says, and go bust. Keep thinking. We're just about to land. Over. Austin, if I may interrupt a second, I think it's a butler, a but there must be a butler. Must. Uh, this answer is hard. Do it without a northern accent. This answer is hard. And go bust. That's the, the last line of the clue. Have you, have you landed yet? What do you make of that? Over. We've just landed, but I haven't a clue what I'm looking for. 
Over. Keep talking to me. Okay, well, you're, you're obviously looking for a hat. Uh, in... If there's a shop there with the name of West Sussex Cathedral Town or something, there is only one West Sussex Cathedral Town, and that's Chichester. What Chichester's got to do with uh, Bewley or Buckleshire, I've no idea. Escape the comfort. Look, uh, while you have a look round there, I think I'll, t I'll press the next line of the clue. Oh, you're going to take a penalty! Is that coming to your top again? I... Well, uh... Penalty? I don't well, know, we're looking, uh, we're looking. You're looking for a hat. I mean, there's lots uh, of food here. Uh, in uh, Buckler's Hard. No, not that. Uh, uh, Gemma! <laughs> a West Sussex Cathedral Town. What's the name of a West Sussex Cathedral? Anybody got a hat? Anybody got a hat? A bust or a hat? Bust. Is there a bust of somebody somewhere? Thank you. Good me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Where are you at the minute? <laughs> well, we got this far. They're going to kill us when they see this. Um, where's the bust? Go to the museum, Gemma, and uh, have a look there. Over. Museum? He must have peeped at the next page. 20 seconds penalty, Mitchell. Let me explain these O's. Treble O is the grid reference of Butler's Hard, and the other O's are the Greenwich Meridian. Now, Chichester sailed round the world from Butler's Hard to Greenwich. But heck, I'm sure you knew that already. Francis Chichester's bust. Over. And think, remember, that's right, I remember the um, six and seven eighths, uh -huh. Julian. Oh, six and seven eighths is a hat size, uh -huh. isn't it? Anybody uh, a hat? Not large enough for Austin what? Mitchell. Can I just try? Oh. Got it, got it, I think, I think, got it. He's got it, Gemma, you're frozen. <laughs> Gemma's frozen with the steel ruler and Susie can only be seconds behind. We'll review the situation after the break. Welcome back. Now, as you can see, we've moved location. We've all come towards the front of the ship. It was a designer's idea, the man who invented the cupolas. Now, we froze Gemma at... 1826. And Susie a whisker behind at... 1822. So, the four puzzle parts are now in place. We have the Bisto, the T-shirt, the tan polish, and this ruler. So, have you worked it out yet? We've restacked the Skyrunners at grid reference SZ291848. Better known as the Needles. Now, we restart the clock and the race. Susie, this is the clue. Nothing is great about this. Look, P, capital P, four brackets, or seven, close brackets, you leapy. And you will be a floating camponologist. Uh, and all white uh, on the night. Well, that's the Isle of Wight, isn't it? Uh, do you know who Michael Barrymore is, Austin? Pardon? Do, do you know who Michael Barrymore is? Michael Barrymore. Michael Barrymore. Do you know who he is? The actor. There's a television personality. Yeah, right. Gillian, Gillian never even heard of him. Oh. Nothing to do with the show, I just thought I'd tell you that. Thanks very much. Michael Barrymore, I don't know how he gets in here, but still. Well, well, what is it, might, it might be a clue. All, all right, right on, on the, the night. night. All right on the night. Oh, very good. But all right on the night, the television show. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Oh, it's not. you're right. Anyway, Gemma, that's the clue. Nothing great about this. Look, P, four, or seven, you leapy, and you'll be a floating campanologist and all white on the night. Do you make anything of that? Over. No. <laughs> That's a short, sharp answer. Thank you very much. How are we Good. doing here? How are we doing? We're far too difficult for back benches. They should have employed front benches. Yeah, people or women. Who, the people who have made our country as great as they are today. Where Over to you. Well, let's start from the top. Nothing great about this. Well, that's, that sounds like... Nothing great about this sounds like little something or other. Little something. Yeah. Right. OK, look P4 or 7, you leap. You'll be a floating campanologist and all white on the night. If I were you, I'd really um, focus on white and think what that means and head for a place that you think white might be. White. A four-masted yacht. Should we give that a try? Over. 
Ask her what if there's anything that's written on the boats. Is there anything written on the boats? Too conspicuous. Too, can you get right down low enough now. to have a look? Over. I'm going to go to that. I think that has something to do with it. It was a, a strange boat to be out there from out of nowhere, so it must be something to do with that. Yeah. Over. But you pop down and have a look and see whether you can read a name or something on the sail. Over. Now, back there okay. is the Needles Pleasure Park run by Tim Belgrove. Cooey, Tim! Floating campanologist, I'm jumping. Oh, floating campanologist. Bells, it must be a floating, um, uh, you know, a, what, I don't know, I'm jumping here. It could be a, a boat with a, a bell on it or something. Great you know, a, a lighthouse uh, boat thing with a bell on it. Must be small. That could be wrong. Uh, the, what's the first line again? Uh, but you pop down and have a look and see whether you can read a name or something on the sail. Over. We have about two minutes, two minutes till we get there. And as soon as we get there, I will have a look and let you know. Over. That's W-I-G-H-T. Is the, is the last line. Now, that must be something to do with Michael Barrymore. No, he's right? not. No, ignore just, Michael just trying to confuse. Ignore that. All just white. All white. All, all white. Well, Listen, well, think where we are. Well, Isle of White, of course. But, but, but so what? Well, I think I'd head towards there, wouldn't you? Imagine? OK, head towards the Isle of White. Now, that's a useful measure for you. That's nothing to do with the map reference, as far as I can see. And you'll be a floating campanologist, which means a peal of bells. Any views? I'm going, to, I'm going to press the next clue, if you, if you haven't got any views, Gemma. Any views? Over. No, I haven't got any clues at all. I'm sorry, I'm being big on this one. Over. I'm taking the next line. Join the Sail Training Association. That's the first line. At four bells, less three. One. Four bells, less three. Join the Sail... the Sail... Join the Sail Training Association of four bells less three. Does uh -huh. that add anything to the confusion? Well? So you've gone for the time penalty, have you? I've gone for the time penalty because I couldn't understand the first clue. Right, I see. Right. Austin is just as stuck as we are, over. Well, good. Over. Do you want to go for your next clue? Yes, I think so. Okay, then hit and go, go, go. Take the time penalty and go for your next clue, Julian. What's that? P, is it? Uh, P penalty, yeah, there we go. So join the Sail Training Association at four bells less three. I'll leave you with This that. is the second clue. Join the Sail Training Association. Now, that must have some relationship to the yachts that you can see below. And We're just coming to the boat now. I'm going to have a look. Three, Over. Four bells is obviously linked to the campanology in the first part, less three, which means one bell. Over. I, I'm, just, I'm just going to look at the boat and see if there's anything written on it. Over. Well, as soon as you can read it, let us know. Over. Well, there's a flag on the top. Looks like a Red Cross flag. Red, the Red Cross on it, whatever that means. And a British flag on the bottom. What's it called? The, the over? Malcolm Miller. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me have a look. There's a sailing boat over there. Can we wait for that sailing boat over there? We, d we, we found a sailing boat. The one I told you about with the big masts. I knew that had something to do with us. Over. She's heading for a big boat uh, with, with sails. Uh, is she? Uh, it doesn't look at all sympathetic at that point. Well, we get near the boat, and then four bells less three is one, isn't it? Less three, Over. Gemma. I don't know if we go for another penalty point, actually. Uh, I'm just trying to see where we can land, because we, I mean, we can't obviously land on this boat, but we've got to get to the boat. So we'll find somewhere to land and find something to take us out there. Over. Uh, there we you go. You've got to get through the boat. Very that's good. The, that's the, now, you say, you say there's some little lifeboats down no, there. No, no, listen to this. You listen, they, remember Hang it on, it's, it's giving me a clue. Remember it said nothing great about this. Nothing great about you think this, so it must be small. Place, no, if you think of a place in the Isle of Wight where great, not great, not great Yarmouth, just Yarmouth. Oh, it's little Yarmouth, just down the, yes, this imitation And Yarmouth. then if you went, she went there, Perhaps she could get a way to get across to the sailing boats. I'm going to go and tell him. Julian? Yeah? Right, listen. You know, in the first boat, there's nothing great about this. She needs to get to the sailing boat. So if she went to not Great Yarmouth, but just Yarmouth, 
She might be able to find a way of getting across to the sailing boat. She might find something that would take her across if she went to Yarmouth. Well, I'm again being helped. Something about Yarmouth. Look, you see, there it is, look. You see. Ah. If you went across to Yarmouth, you'd find a ferry, conceivably, that might take you out. Not a ferry, but she'd find a way of getting out there. They're getting out to the boat. Yeah, fly to get to Yarmouth. Fly to Yarmouth. Fly to Yarmouth. And there's a lifeboat station there. Maybe it's the lifeboat station. Yes, okay, we're going to go to the lifeboat station Good now. Yarmouth. Over. Do you know what we're looking for? Over. I suspect a lifeboat. Over. Okay. Right. We're going to try that. Trying Over. Lifeboat. Now, nothing great about this. Must be, therefore, Yarmouth. Uh, so if you get there, Austin! Yarmouth, Shut up! you might find a way to get to the sailing boat. Over. Austin, will you let me get a word in, please? We're already going to land and find a little boat or something to get us out there. I found Yarmouth. We're, we're nearly there. There's a pier. We're going to the land, and then I'm looking around for a, a boat of some kind to take us out there. And then I would assume that the four bells less three is a bell on the boat where maybe the clue is. Over. You'll find, Susie, something in Yarmouth that will drive you or take you to where you want to go. That's what I'm told. I hope for your sake it's not a boat. Over. OK, I'm ready. Over. You're looking when you get to Yarmouth for something that'll take you across to the sailing boats. And I hope to God it doesn't mean that you're going out to the needles. And, and P4 and P7, which were in the first set of clues, are very important. I'm not clear what P4 and P7 at this stage actually means. Over. The campinologist must have something to do with bells as well. Oh, ho! oh, oh shut up, shut up. Oh, that's what Dad asked. She's got to Yarmouth. Right. Uh, She's looking for a boat to take her out to the sailing boat. Excellent. Right. You're doing, you're doing well, I gather, Gemma. Over. Austin, you've only got six or seven minutes left. You've also disappeared, Gemma. Come in. Over. We're looking for somewhere to land. Wherever There's a place down here in sort of... In the middle, there's a heliport thingy there that we're going to land on. And then I'm going to have to run to... God knows where to find this... There's millions of boats to take us out there. Over. You're floating campanologist, uh, and four bells left. What was that other line of you? You were, you were all those numbers you were coming up with. Yes, P something uh, seven four look, whatever. Look, P Over. P four and P seven. P four and P seven. Before you leap, look P four and P seven. Uh, that that's the numbers I was coming out with. Over. Well, I think that's the number of the boat. Over. And, and P4 and P7, which were in the first set of clues, are very important. I'm not clear what P4 and P7 at this stage actually mean.
and uh, I'm on a lifeboat. If you're on a speedboat, P4 or P7, you know what you're doing. Thank okay, you. over. The powerboat drivers are David Graham Smith and Simon Raven. Malcolm Miller, he's Bob Stevens. Make him walk the plank, Bob. I don't know what I'm looking for because my batteries have gone dead. Oh, my clue. Oh, hey, I know, but the batteries have gone dead. I've lost contact. And the batteries have gone dead. Personally, I reckon Julian pulled the wires out. <laughs> Where Gemma is, so it's very we're not getting anything back from Gemma. Well, is there a bell on the bloody boat called Mal the boat's called Malcolm Miller? Has she got the clue? I think she's got the clue. We've got the clue. We've got Prince Susie, you are frozen. Better girl, you want it. Well, as you can see, we uh, lost radio contact with Gemma there, and mistakenly we froze Susie first. But the camera never lies, they say. And after the post-mortem, we announced Gemma and Austin the winners in just over 43 minutes. So, Gemma, you found it as well. She's found a photograph of Brit Eklund, OK? So write that down, a photograph of Brit Eklund, write that down. So, this is what we have at the moment. They have the packet of Bisto, they have the T-shirt with the eye on it, they have the tan polish, they have the steel ruler, and they now have a picture of Brit Eklund. Gentlemen, it's over to you. We want you now to solve the puzzle. I got it. I've got it. You got it? And what is it? Royal Britannia. You think it's Royal Britannia? You think it is, Julian? Oh, I thought it was perhaps a relationship between um, Sir David Steele and Brit Eklund, which we read Julia, about in I'm private I'm going to tell you, we have a winner. The gentleman who solved the clue is Mr Austin Mitchell. Austin, come here. I'm going to shake you by the hand. You did it. It is Royal Britannia, Julian. Did you get that? Well, you see, rule for what rule, huh? Brit, Brit, Brit Eklund, tan, tan boot polish. And I for I, and R, Bisto. Oh, Let's see, it's yeah, it's Royal Britannia. Soaked from the powerboat race, our intrepid skyrunners, they return to base. Looking windswept, but um, interesting. Oh, yeah. And Austin oh, runs to greet and hug the victorious Gemma, and Julian waits for a drink. I got to be so there you have it, a picture of the elegance and sophistication of two West End stars and two members of Parliament.